Normally, to extend the coastline of the sea, artificial islands are built, and the living example of this is Dubai's Palm Islands. To create land pieces against the waves of the sea is truly one of the toughest challenges. But today, you will learn about a city that was not built inside the sea, but instead the sea itself was brought into the desert. Yes, we are talking about Saba al Ahmad Sea City in Kuwait, which was the dream of Kuwait's business tycoon Khalid al Marzouk. Building a beautifully shaped sea and advanced infrastructure for two and a half lakh people in the scorching heat and desert of Kuwait was a mission where engineers had to work against the laws of nature. But the question is, why did Kuwait even need this mega sea city? What complications arose in it that even after 32 years, work is still ongoing? And above all, to what extent did engineers have to go to make this city possible? Welcome once again to ZMTV videos. Viewers compared to others, Kuwait is indeed very small, but even then it is the second richest country in the Middle East. Kuwait is so rich that the most valuable currency in the world is the Kuwaiti dinar, where in India, one US dollar equals 78 rupees, and in Pakistan, one dollar equals 200 rupees in Kuwait, for just one Kuwaiti dinar, you get 3.2 US dollars. And the biggest reason for this is the crude oil produced here. According to official reports, Kuwait produces more than 300 crore barrels of oil every year. On the one hand, such massive oil production and on top of that, Kuwait's population is only 4.2 million. This is why every single person here is richer than necessary. Owning expensive cars, yachts, luxury villas and all kinds of luxury items is considered normal in Kuwait. And this did not just start recently, in fact, Kuwait's fortune changed 85 years ago when oil was discovered here for the first time. In the 1980s, Kuwait had a lot of money, but now they were running short of land to build luxury villas. Almost all of Kuwait's area is filled with barren desert. Because of a lack of basic facilities, living here was quite difficult. That's why everyone wanted to build their villa or farmhouse by the seaside, to enjoy the cool breeze. Seeing the increasing demand, Kuwaiti business tycoon Khalid Al Marzouk dreamed of building such a luxury city where every villa and every mansion would be built on a private beach. But this was only possible if there was empty land available on Kuwait's coastline. Kuwait City had already covered more than half of the coast, and the remaining coastline was already occupied with projects. Just 15 kilometers before the Saudi Arabian border, there was a natural creek system on the Persian Gulf. Because of the pressure of the waves, water would flow deep inside these creeks. Seeing this, Khalid Al Marzouk got the idea that why not use these natural creeks and build an entire city here, by extending and shaping the creeks according to one's choice. He saw the dream, but to what extent fulfilling it would increase the difficulties was beyond anyone's imagination. Now normally, natural coastlines are formed by the pressure of air and waves. If one tries to alter or change these coastlines, they return to their original shape within a few days because they are battling nature itself. Now, if a creek system was to be built in the desert with a chosen shape, and natural forces would not be able to destroy its shape, then it required planning that worked against the laws of nature. And here too, such planning was needed. In 1986, Khalid Al Marzouk's son, Fawaz Al Marzouk, contracted with a British engineering design company, who working day and night with the help of computer simulations, created the design of this mega project. Naturally, there were only two tidal creeks here, but the decision was made to create two more. Calculations were made about where each creek would start, how much pressure of wind and waves would affect it, and the creeks with more water pressure were split to form a design. But while the matter was still in the planning phase, a huge disaster struck. In 1990, Iraq attacked Kuwait. Iraqi soldiers captured the entire Kuwait within just two days. The construction of Sea City was far from starting. During this time, even ongoing businesses were shut down and locals were forced to stay confined in their homes. American allies helped Kuwait and fought against Iraq. This continued for a year, but when Iraqi soldiers weakened, they set fire to more than 700 oil wells in Kuwait while retreating. Not only this, but they also installed underground mines around the oil wells, so that no one would dare extinguish the fire. This fire was so disastrous that it continued non-stop for the next 10 months. According to an estimate, because of these oil well fires, Kuwait lost 6 million barrels daily. In total, over 10 months, Kuwait lost 180 crore barrels of oil. The amount of oil the whole world uses in 15 days, 
the same amount was burnt in Kuwait. After 10 months, Kuwait finally controlled the fire after spending one and a half billion dollars. This was one such incident in history that hollowed Kuwait from within for many years. By the time Kuwait recovered from this crisis, it was already too late. Meanwhile, in another Gulf country, projects had emerged that made Kuwait's sea city project look insignificant. Yes, we are talking about Dubai. Here, the world's most expensive seven-star hotel had been built, and construction of multiple artificial islands had started. Moreover, construction of the world's tallest building, Burj Khalifa, had also begun. Dubai had already taken most of the international attraction, but still, in 2004, Kuwait started the construction of Sea City. The Sea City project was divided into five phases, and it was decided that phases would be completed one by one. The first task was excavation in phases one and two. For this, 40 bulldozers, 90 articulated dumpers, 87 excavators, 48 dump trucks, and six cranes were brought in. This was no ordinary excavation because in this part of the desert, silt was found. Silt is a very soft type of sand on which no building can stand. In fact, even walking on it is difficult. Therefore, the upper layer of sand was separated by digging, and then the silt underneath was removed. After that, the same sand was poured back to increase the ground level. This way, if the sea level rose in the coming years due to global warming, the villas on the shore would remain unaffected. In this project, the excavation of silt and sand was carried out on a massive scale. For months, day and night, an army of workers was engaged in this task. Continuation of previous narration. According to the project director's estimate, a total of 74 million cubic meters of sand was excavated in phases 1, 2, and 3 of Sea City. This was so much sand that the world's largest cricket stadium in Ahmedabad could be filled 20 times with it. The level was raised with sand, but now it was time to compress it. Because at this stage, the sand was very loose and could not bear the foundation of any building. For compression, a 15,000 kilograms weight was dropped from a crane onto the ground. Wherever the load fell, a big hole was formed. In one day, 15 tons of this weight would be dropped 1,200 times, creating such a scene. But one problem kept haunting everyone from within. When seawater was brought into these artificial creeks, would it flow naturally or not? If the water did not change with time, fungus would grow in it, and foul-smelling water could badly fail this project. To solve this, tidal gates were installed. A tidal gate is a mechanical gate that automatically opens with the pressure of incoming seawater. When the sea waves decrease or stop, the gate automatically closes. After testing on computer simulations, it was noticed that once tidal gates were installed, 100% of the creek's water would automatically change. The tidal gate problem was only the solution to one major issue, but many other issues still remained. In this project, a total of 250 kilometers of new beaches were going to be created. In fact, these beaches would be longer than Kuwait's own coastline. For so many new beaches, special sand was required, the kind usually found on natural beaches. But where would so much sand come from? This was a big question. Experts came up with a solution. Normal desert sand, which Kuwait has no shortage of, contains particles of all sizes. But the sand on beaches has larger sized particles. Therefore, the decision was made to filter coarse-sized particles from normal desert sand. The sand was washed with water, and the larger grains were separated. Not once, but this process was repeated four times. The grains left after washing and filtering were perfect for beaches. Every day, 4,000 tons of sand were brought in, washed, and filtered. This process continued day and night for months. To protect the beach sand from the pressure of waves, stone walls were also decided to be built. These stones were brought from a quarry across the border in Saudi Arabia because Kuwait did not have even a single stone quarry of its own. After six years of effort, three phases of Sea City were completed. Now it was time for a grand launch party. The then Emir of Kuwait, Saba Al Ahmad, inaugurated the project with great celebration, and on this occasion, he also decided to attach his name to the project. Since then, this project has been known as Saba Al Ahmad Sea City. This is an extremely complex mega project of its kind, of which only four phases have been completed so far, and construction of the fifth phase is still ongoing. For the past 32 years, Kuwait has endured many difficulties to complete this project, 
and explaining all the engineering challenges faced in it in a short video is indeed very difficult.